And the other thing is CPU bottleneck. Uh, is our solution going to be a, a bottleneck for, um, for other processes? <clears throat> Remember that in production, your solution is not the only one that is going to run, and there will be other, um, other services or other um, processes that are going to run alongside with yours. And you might wonder why. Understanding why that um, DBS care about this probably would push you to think a little bit harder about how you want to um, solve the the um, the high volume challenge. Firstly, DBA, DBS um, have some sort of SLAs. Sometimes it's written, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just implied. But they want to make sure that the production server is available, that you know it's uh, that it's responsive. And they also want to reduce risk or avoid risk. So if your solution is going to put the production servers into in risk, they would probably be really, really um, hesitant or even you know say no um, on the on the first go. You know it's not gonna it's not gonna be you know it's not gonna make it into production. It's just no way that you know your solution can run in production if it's going to put um, the server into risk. So. Um, having solution that is um, stable, um, that doesn't consume too much disk memory or CPU is very important. And on top of that, usually almost organizations have some sort of governance and um, the DBAs, actually as the DB developers, we, we have to care about data. We are the guardians of data. So we need to make sure that our solutions work good and that um, that it will, it will work well in production and that it, um, it's not going to damage anything else. So um, with a lot of things when we want to um, solve a problem or come up with, with a solution, we need to understand the details. So details are quite important and in this case understanding your SQL Server environment, be it production, development, where your solution is going to run, um, uh, it's quite important. So this includes things like the recovery model, um, the utilization of the servers, um, the hardware environment, for example, number of processors, uh, memory, and things like that. Sometimes this information will be um, will be documented somewhere, but if it's not, talk to the DBA. Say that, hey, I've got this. Um, I've got this challenge, and I would just. I'm just wondering whether it's going to run in production. Okay, can you share a little bit um, more information about the production environment? And I'm pretty sure, um, 95, 99 percent of the time, they would be more than happy to let you know what kind of environment they have, and then work with you whether, you know, it's going to work or not, um, whether your solution is going to work or not, or your design. So understanding the SQL Server environment, as well as understanding what business wants to achieve, um, hopefully will um, help you to build a great solution, um, and in turn you would have happy users and happy DBA. So. The techniques for high volume data processing that I have learned throughout the years is to maximize the throughput depending on your environment. So um, the first way or the first technique that I um, that I usually use is batch processing using T-SQL. I call this as a reliable pipe just because um, when I do this batch processing using T-SQL, most of the time the data actually reside on the same server. Um, and I just need to transfer them across, and then um, I kind of don't care how long it's going to take, but as long as it's reliable, it's going to be there um, on the specified time, then I'm, I'm happy with it. The next one, or the next technique, is to use some sort of um, fast pipe, so we just want to insert something really, really quickly. And I usually use SSIS, um, BCP or bulk insert, so the advantage of this is that you can work with different file formats or um, different sources if you're using SSIS. Another technique that I want to um, share with you is the, is the divide and conquer using balanced data distributor, and that is available in SSIS, and also using partitioning. Um, unfortunately, it's not in scope for this session. 
Okay, so um, let's start with um, the T-SQL way. So the idea of batching in T-SQL is that we want to break the problem into smaller pieces. So if you have, for example, 10 million rows, you want to load 1 million at a time. The reason for that is um, hopefully you can reduce the table log duration. So after inserting one batch, you can wait, say for example, 10 seconds or even just one second and then load the next batch. And also, it gives you a great control or greater control to, um, to, to do error handling as well. So if something goes wrong, you can um, roll back that batch and then move on to the next one. That, that, could be a, that could be something that you need to do for your solution. So because we're breaking the, the problem into smaller pieces, that means you have less risk to roll back, so less time to roll back. And if you are breaking the problem into smaller pieces, um, instead of um, consuming uh, you know, large 10 dB, now it's becoming less because you have less, um, less data to work with. And on top of that, you can also add customized visibility on the progress. Um, in fact, uh, let me just have a look here. OK, so I'm just going to show you a bit of a demo about um, on inserting on inserting rows. Okay, let me just double check my counts here. So I've got I've got thirty four thousand um, rows in my dimension table, and I've got fourteen point something millions on the staging table that I want to transfer into the fact table. So I just want to make sure that I'm truncating it first and uh, do a bit of a cleanup. Okay, so let's start with this script here. Um, I have two variables. One, one is batch size and the other one is wait time. Generally, I use these um, two variables as um, input parameters to my stored procedures. So this script can be converted into a stored procedure. And then I start declaring all the variables that I'm going to be using. So I am initializing my batch size to 500,000, and I'm just um, using or specifying the wait time here. So the technique that I'm using here when I do the um, when I do the batching is based on the ID. So I am assuming that the ID in the staging table. So this here. Um, I'm assuming that the ID is sequential, um, and if it starts from 1 to 10 million, then I'm just going to go through um, 500,000 at a time based on the IDs. <clears throat> so I'll just jump on quickly to the, um, the loop here. So I'm, I'm using the while loop. I'm setting the NID here to say that, um, to dictate what the NID for that batch that I want to load so that when I'm up to the call logic here, I can say where the ID is between start ID and end ID. So, so, so this particular insert here 